Hello everyone, recently I coached a Platinum 3 player, and I wanted to share this session so that you could all learn from it as well. This video is quite long, but everything is timestamped in the description, and if you want to get coached by me yourself, there's info at the end of the video. So like, uh, so like right here, what would you um, prioritize here? Um, so about the Kenches? I think I would just play the two Kenches over the two units you have on the board. And sell the two units that I have now? Uh, it's more so if you get like, um, cause you're pretty much never going to sell the, uh, the two, ken two Kenches and cause you really want a Kench two star. Yeah. But you don't really care that much about like a Fio or a two star or Nami two star. They're not going to do that much for you in the early game. So like, say if you got, um, say for example, if you got like some duelists, then you would want to sell those to pick up the, uh, like the also just gives you more options. Yeah. Um, here I would pick up the Nidalee and play two sharpshooter. I think that's fine. Okay. Anything else you I think would that's... Uh, prioritize? Um, probably not. I think like maybe maybe a Maokai, but yeah, like I would always pick up the Mal Maokai here. Mm, okay. You gotta sell some units to pick it up. Yeah. Like you said, if you're, if you're a Nami, it's not, not going to do anything because you're. Oh, wow. Yeah, so now do I. like? I would always so... buy that. Okay. <laughs> like it's a, it's a chosen frontliner, it gives you two brawler. You can easily fit like four brawlers if you get like a buy, and that's going to be like super strong. Yeah. Now, would you play. Would you drop Sharpshooter to play two Kench, or would you just yeah, play two I would, Kench? Yeah, I would just play. Uh, I would play two Kench always here. I think you play nearly over Vayne, right? She's like pretty yeah. trash. Yeah. Would you ever make GA here? Um, I've never been in this situation where I've actually had this this early. Um, probably not with two Kinch because I feel like they're just unkillable. I would just quickly sell Fiora to pick up Pike. Uh, I would. I agree. I would not. Um, oh, you, yeah. You had tear on her. Yeah, I wouldn't make an item. Yeah. So I mean, this is like because you don't really really want to put GA on uh, Tom Kench and yeah. GA on Italy is not going to do anything. Um, I don't think I would pick anything up here, right? I pick up uh, a playlist. I would play Lissandra over. Uh, Nidalee. I think Lissandra's just a better unit. Yeah. Okay. You put tier on Lissandra? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, would you ever... Uh, I guess... Uh, yeah, that's fine if you want to put Chainlist on it. Uh, yeah, kind of. Like, uh, like, I don't know. I feel like if I get a belt, just put Sunfire. Right? Or Yeah, and you also have like another two-star Kench, so like... Yeah. You're probably gonna sell. Uh, it depends a little bit on your items, but you're probably gonna sell that Kench at some point. Which the non-chosen? Uh, no, no, the one that's chosen to find like a better one. Okay. So even if you're playing like um, like Brawler Ash, or like Elder yeah. Ash, like you're still most of the time gonna sell your like Brawler chosen to find uh, something better. Unless you can get him three star, but I don't, I don't know. If, I, th I think that's the, probably the best port you can play. Okay. I would just put the uh, Ken uh, the uh, the Kenches on the outskirts and have like your two one stars in the middle. Okay. And like put them all in a line, so that the oh, Kenches take most of the aggro because most people put their carries on one of the sides. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Now, would you would you buy this Kench and then sell like I, these three? I, I would buy the Kench, just because you can still like hold eco. I would sell the sharpshooters here. Okay. I would sell the uh, probably sell Lissandra if I uh, yeah if you don't win, but oh. looks like you're gonna win here. Tough. Okay. <laughs> so like on this carousel, you you have a lot of time since you're last pick, so you want to be just be kind of just scouting the other players, just to quickly okay. see, like see how strong they are in case you want to level next turn to keep your win streak. Okay.
I got Nami Chosen on this bench. The people are pretty weak from what it looks like. Yeah. So now, like with this, I I don't actually know what I'd go for here. I would go for Probably uh, just... I would go for chain and then bow. Okay. And Reason. then would you? Okay. Oh, Sorry. Or at least because um, you can make bramble this, and bramble this is super strong yeah. in the um, in the. Early That's game. what I was gonna ask if you would bramble. And it's mostly because of you. You want to maintain your win streak right now because people are pretty weak, and you you want to level here, to, and you just want to put in like a. What do you think you want to put in here? Uh, when I want to level. Yeah, I would level here uh, to maintain your win streak. You like really strong. Like right now. go to five, yeah. Yeah. Or okay. Um, I feel like I just put in Pike for CC, right? Yeah, Pike's fine. Okay. You could also uh, play like, uh, like Lissandra, but it's not going to do that much. Because pretty much yeah. now Kench is going to turn into your carry with a uh, Bramble Vest. Okay. Because he doesn't do any magic damage, so you can just check the damage craft to like, and all the magic damage he's dealing is like just from Bramble Vest. Oh, okay. <clears throat> you still want to pick up uh, the Sandra here, because you because okay. you you're staying above ten, and they um, they reverted the chop changes, so they're like yeah you, yeah. So you pretty much just want to buy units so, as, when you don't lose uh, econ. Okay. Also, so, one, uh, um, one quick thing you want to do is you want to have just put them all in a line on the, either the left or right side because you want your Bramble Vest Kench in the middle so he takes most of the aggro with Bramble Vest. Okay. <clears throat> so if they reverse shop changes, right? So it's like I could still get these same units twice, yeah? Yeah. So, um, so, so what's the point of buying? Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, it's just you, so you have more options. Like, if you get a random Yasu know, two-star, you might play it, or, like, a random, uh, like, um, uh, Lissandra two-star, you want to play it. Because you still don't have a backline carry. Yeah. And you want to make 20 here, like, pretty much every time. So you want to sell off, like, the Elise, or that one, for sure. Evelyn, yeah. Evelyn, and sell, like, Yasu and Nami. And then sell like Silas, Nami, and Liz yeah, Lissandra. Um, would you pick up this Cassiopeia? Mm, maybe. Depends a little bit if you can make. Uh, depends where you get dropped. Okay. Because right now your items are like pretty flexible. You can pretty much just still play any comp from here. Yeah, this is like not a actually. No. <clears throat> uh. Yeah, I would just sell a Kenshin buy to pick up Cassio. So now when you see your items, what what, you, what comps are you thinking about playing? Um, I mean, I could blue buff for Jinx now because she's in shop and there's a vein. Um, I would always buy Kindred here. I'm a player over Pike. Okay. I'm a slime blue buff. Yeah, that's... Yeah, and just move one Kent down. So that she doesn't get jumped jump by sessions. So, like, put them all, all the way back line. Like, there. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Just sell off Pike to make it 40. Something you also could. Uh, another thing you also would consider here is to level to six, but you'd have to scout all the other players and keep track of who you played. And that's pretty hard when you're getting coached because there's a lot of other stuff going on. Yeah, true. Would you ever buy the Jinx? No. Not when you... Okay. I Jinx, assume because... Jinx, yeah, Jinx. Go ahead. Yeah, Jinx is only good if you're either running 3 fortune or if you have, like, sharpshooters. 
Yeah. Would you, uh... Um, wanna buy the Vi again? Um... I think the, the number one priority here is just to level and play something. Like, pretty much anything. Like, Cassie okay. is probably gonna be the best. Just put her, like, front line. Put her, put her where Maokai is, and then put, like, Maokai all the way left like that. Okay. Now, why why is this a better spot for her? Is it just because she will she's pretty, actually hit? Uh, she's pretty squishy. So, like, say, if, um, if like, um, th this guy's board was flipped on the other side, then Bane would target the uh, the Cassio, and she would just die before she ults. Okay. It matters a lot late game. You can pick up by enough so you don't lose eco. Okay. Like, pretty much Cassio P is never, like, tanky enough to, uh, to tank like aggro from my uh, carry and that's why you have her like between those two uh between, you usually want to have her between two units okay um i wouldn't buy anything here right yeah so then you just want to scout to see what other people are playing okay this guy's playing sharpshooters yeah fortune some duelist six and light with nami already has talent yeah brawlers okay i got three dust like two people, three people looking to play sharpshooter, so I've chosen. This is the duelist. <laughs> I mean, what if, if I were to get two gloves? Like, if I get a glove off carousel. Would it be like entirely bad to play Kendrick three Kendrick carry? Yeah, you could um I think Glove is fine to take off this next carousel. Because either like I um I or Jewel Gauntlet's gonna do fine. Yeah. So what's okay. your priority okay. here? Just looking at the Uh maybe maybe like belt. Yeah, I don't know. Probably just a belt, or I'd go for like an Akali. I think either chain or belt is fine here. Yeah. Sing more for belt because I have the rod for Morello if I get a Morgana or something. Yeah, I, I think that um, you just quickly want to scout the other players uh, that, that are strongest, the ones that are like wind streaking at the top. See, so you haven't played. Uh... You played. You just played this guy. Yeah. The two over, over you. Like that guy. You just make sure you don't get jumped by his Diana, and then scout the other guy below him. Like that guy's also pretty strong, but most likely yeah. gonna beat him. As long as your Kinder doesn't get jumped. Um, so I'm gonna just level here, right? Yeah, well, now no, no, it's a bit too late, but, um... Okay. I would just pick up Lulu and Lux. Okay. And then just, uh, I would also pick up the Jax pair. Because if you get, like, a random Jax 2 star, you'd probably just throw it into your team. Okay. Didn't see how we beat you, but your Jinx probably got or your Kindred probably got one shot by his Jinx. Is this ever a point where I like go seven and play Lux now or no? Uh no, not when you lost your win streak. Now you're basically just saving up so you can uh um uh, so you can either like go fast eight or roll at seven. So just okay. buy the uh, I would just buy Janet pair. Like I'm assuming you'd spend rest on XP, right? Or no? Yeah. Okay. You stay above 50 like that. Like, you see how important frontline is here? Like, even though you're... Yeah. Is, like, slot beating? Oh, no. That's not that's unfortunate. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Nami is like super frustrating. 
getting CC'd. Forty more seven. Okay. That's um, it's a really good shop. I would just yeah. sell the, I would just sell the Jaxter because you pretty much want everything here except for the ETF. Okay. And I assume whatever items I get here, I'm gonna yeah. like this will determine. So you just what wanna I'm just quickly scout. scout everyone again so you can see what they're playing. Like sharpshooters. This guy's going sharpshooters. Duelist. No chosen though. A six of lightning. Yeah. Something random. Dust. Sharp. Sharp. Yeah, there's like two sharps here. Okay, I just got a Nico and a Spat. What the fuck is this game? So um, you, uh, level here? Yeah, I do want to level. What I... What'd you play? I would play Asher every time you get two Hunter. Okay. Um, Probably play Yumi over uh, Dubai. Or the second Kench. One of those yeah. Two. Not sure which is better. Would you make an item? Yeah, um, I kind of want to do Ginsu for Ash, but then I feel like if I, I'm committing myself to Ash at that point. I think like going Ash this game is fine. Also, okay. like one thing I wouldn't make is Giant Slayer this game because there's going to be a lot of sharp Yeah, shooters, there's sharp not gonna, It's not going to proc on those. Yeah. I think yeah, making uh, Ginsu here is uh, fine. You probably want um, you want either Trackla or uh, or a QSS for your Ash, preferably QSS. But... Yeah. Um. Okay. So now I probably buy these K three right for yeah, the Kindred too. Kindred too. Okay. You pretty much and just then... uh, fast eight from the spot due to your uh, HP. Okay, should I slam Sunfire on the Chosen or no? No, I wouldn't. And it's too late, and it's not gonna. It's not doesn't really do that much. Okay. Um, fuck. Should have played the the Yumi over the fucking second Kench. So I'm assuming I'm sticking to this brother Kench now, right? No, I, I would or still no. sell it. I would probably still sell it. All right, would you sell it after this round? I would sell it before you're going to level to eight and then roll down. Okay, so sell it, level eight, then roll down. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, Yumi over the second catch. Um, okay, six sharps, dusk. I don't think my like back line is going to get jumped. Um, it doesn't look like there are that many assassin players. There's only like Talon, but you can, um, if you're playing Ash, you can just uh, turtle around her to keep her alive. Yeah. Uh, it's like your your probably... is just gonna die. <laughs> yeah. So I probably should not have moved the the Kench. Oh yeah. I mean, I guess she just lives. He doesn't have items on Ari, so you're probably fine. She's very uh, item dependent unit. Yeah. Now, would you sell the Janna and the Lux? I would sell it. I would sell the Janna part, but I wouldn't sell Lux. Or actually, okay. no. Yeah, I would sell Lux because if you're uh, running Ezreal, then you're running Morgana to over Lux to uh, to get Bastard in. But it depends a little bit. Like here, like one thing you want to do is just to like after this uh, round, you just want to scout to see like how many AD carries are in the game because then. If there aren't that many, then Dastar's not going to be as important. Okay. I'm assuming you play for the Negatron, right? Instead of the boat? Yeah, I would always take Negatron. Okay, well, we're taking a boat. Yeah. And Negatron's really good because it builds QSS and it also makes Elderwood spot. Because if you get nine Elderwood, you pretty much like, pretty much just win. Because like, uh, everybody gets like four Vanguard, four Mystic bonus just from the trait after like, uh, 10 seconds. And they get like insane amounts of AD, so they pretty much just, uh, Every unit can like carry super hard. Yeah. Would you ever pick up the Hecarim? I would. Okay. Um. Just gonna level him. What about this Morgana I keep? 
Yeah, I would just uh, I would sell the Lux Prayer level and just play on a, a, a Kench or the Hecarim. Because even if you go below, because when you can level and stay above 40, you're pre you pretty much always want to do it. Yeah. Because you only lose one gold, but you get to put in a unit, and here, like, you get to put in that two star Kench. Or you get to put in, like, three Elderwood, which is going to give your, like, Ash more damage. So, like, we're being pretty uh, greedy here with items because. But since we like win streak like super hard, um, we can pretty much afford to do it. Okay. So two star this buy, yeah. yeah. I would always buy that. Okay. Even if you're gonna sell it like next turn, like say if you're gonna pivot like after that, I would still buy buy two star there. Okay. Because it'll uh, pay one gold to get a two star unit in. Should I put the hacker in for the for the elderwood, right? Yeah, that's fine. Just quickly check the damage graph. See how much Kindred or Ash is doing. Oh yeah, that's fine. Um, so after this, after these PVE PVE round, should I sell this Bala Kench now? Yeah, you I'll, you sell it on the Raptors round. Just do that. Okay. Sell it on the round and then just roll down while the round's happening. No, nah, you, you roll down after. But if you got a, you can slow. You can. You're already level eight, so you can like slow roll down to to fifty, on the turn. Okay. And so you just need to, I'm not going to like talk too much while you like do your transition and pivot because you probably just want to, you should try to like do it your, um, yourself. Okay. Because you can get, you can get like, it needs to go pretty fast because you're going to roll down like more than 50 gold. And if you're like asking me if you should buy like this unit or not, then it's going to go like way too slow. Okay. And we'll I'll, I'll go through the uh, we'll go through that transition like transition pretty in depth after uh, the game is done on the VOD. It's gonna be pretty important. Okay, sounds good. Always take that. Just put it in over anything. So like here, for example, uh, here you have Ash 2-star, you got uh, Kench 2-star. Don't sell the Kindred yet. Um, so you can pretty much just uh, stabilize uh, off this. I would sell Kane and uh, the Azir here oh. just to make uh, uh, 50 or 30, I mean. Yeah. So you just want to make items uh, right now. Okay. Before you uh, keep rolling. Uh, all right. So, so I'm gonna just remember I'm gonna list Kench again. Um. So I make Bloodthirster. I would uh, just make Elderwood spot on the Warwick. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. I forgot I didn't even have the fucking spot. Yeah, All right. I'll just make Seeks and uh, Sunfire. For... Just put, just put the Seeks on the Ash, because you... Put Sunfire on the Kench, is fine. Okay. You really want to get, uh, you want to get six, uh, Elderwood in. Yeah. Play a Kindred over the Kench. And then just move the Kench items over to Warwick. Try to put uh, Estriel where Warwick is and then move uh, move him a bit more up. Fuck, I missed it. Should, now should I keep rolling here or should I not? 
Or should I make Econ and then roll? Yeah, you make you want to roll down a bit more uh, next turn, probably. Okay. That's why, like, six elder wood is pretty important when you got bad ash items. Because then uh, your other, like, right there, Warwick would never carry without six elder wood. Okay. What would you prioritize here? I'd go with Deathblade for some more damage on Ash. Okay. Death. Uh, yeah, never mind. <clears throat> Nine now, should I move the Kindred down to get Zeke's buff? Yeah, I would um just quickly scout to see how many Assassins players there are. Uh, none. Yeah, so just, yeah. just move to the other side because it's easier to protect. Uh... Get Ezreal getting the buff is way more important than Kindred, so just swap. Oh, okay, to... okay. Just move Malkai down next to Ez Ezreal. Okay. And then like a uh, uh, um, put like Vi and uh, Warwick a bit more up front, like uh, like that. Okay. I wouldn't buy that. Oh, I guess okay. It's, I guess it's fine. And maybe you can go for a Kindred three or an Ash three. <clears throat> Would you ever buy this Talon? Like, there's no reason to, right? No, you would never, you pretty much never pivot here. The only thing you would, like, uh, you can't really take out anything. Like, maybe you'd, so I would just roll, try to get Kindred 3 or Ash 3. Okay. So you just sit here and then you. Yeah, also. I'd play Lulu over the back room. Okay. Just for a bit more CC. Yeah. See, I don't know if you saw like how important the Estral ult there was. Because he slows the attack speed of uh, sharpshooters, and that's like super important. Okay. Sell the um, Cassiopeia as well. You just roll, roll it all down. Try and hit. Roll it all down. Okay. Go for the new new three as well. So like you stop at twenty because you're probably not gonna hit Ash um, with that amount of gold. So you just stop here. Okay. Uh, who do you think Ludens goes on? Uh, just goes on Kindred. Okay, that's what I that's what I saw. Was either thinking Kindred or uh, or the Ezreal. Lulu. Oh, okay. No, Ezreal. Yeah, just oh wow. Yeah, I just got fucking murked by a nerf comp. Feels bad, man. It's unlucky, because with QSS that would be, uh, this game would be a lot more winnable. Yeah. I think it's just a uh, fourth, yeah? yeah? You got a fourth here. Okay. So I would always, uh, prioritize, uh, Tom Kench parry here, because frontline is super important in the early game. Pretty much okay. always want to have, um, two frontliners and one back, and, like, one DPS at mm -hmm. level three. It's so like already like it's very important here on these stages to think about like what your uh, stage two board is going to be like on two one like what what's your what three units are, are you going to put in so you're going to try to okay. make uh, the best board you can like already here like these rounds are really important 
for setting uh -huh. like if you're for setting up your stage two. Like I would always buy the Kenshifer and just play those two because you're pretty, you're pretty much never gonna sell these, regardless mm -hmm. of what you get dropped. Uh, and then I would uh, probably also like pick up maybe like Elise and Yasuo. Nami is not really good on her own. She's only good if he, she has a. Uh, she has three mage, then she's actually like pretty decent. Okay. But, and also like Fury is pretty much just a synergy bot in the early game. So unless you, the only time you'd use her if you find like an early Callista or if you have like a two star Yasuo with uh, decent items. Yeah. So here I would just um just one small thing you can do. It doesn't really matter that too much, but mm -hmm. uh you uh So like you wouldn't buy the Tom Kench two star, you would just play these two and the Maokai. And then like after the round starts you play the Tom Kench. Because you don't really put in units that you're not like one hundred percent like uh that you don't one hundred percent want to play. In case you like get dropped gold and you want to pre level or if you say you get dropped like I don't know, like, say you get dropped, like, two Vanguard units here, then maybe you want to pick up, like, these for four Vanguard. But if you, like, play the Nidalee and the Bane like you did, then you can't sell those two to buy the units. It just gives you more options if you uh, do it that way. Like, always only play units that you're, like, 100% sure you want to keep. Okay. Because it can uh, matter in some situations. And TFT is about, like, um, doing a lot of the small things like this. Or like, mm -hmm. um, so it gives you more options and you can make like more optimal plays. But your shop is pretty, uh, you got like good frontline, but your backline DPS this game was pretty non-existent in the early game. And so this, um, I would always buy this. Just because like far brawler is like super strong if you can get it online like a uh, in stage two also like mm -hmm. the um tom kench in general just tanks a lot of damage in the early game because like these one star units are pretty much not going to do any damage to him because of the uh, his um his his like um ability because he blocks so much damage and like with the chosen yeah. trait like he gets even more uh, hp it's like also like if you got like a Either cultist or keeper, at least chosen. I would also just buy that too and play it, just because it's like good frontline. Mm -hmm. And as you see, uh, when we play like four brawler units, like Kench can pretty much just carry on his own. His his AD is like pretty high, and he's like super tanky. It's like even here, I think I would, I would just play the, play like these two, uh, three units and not play these because they're not going to do any damage when they're both one starred. It's like one thing is like pretty, uh, a great way of like finding out which units are like good and not good is just like to, to check the, the damage graph. Do you see like how yeah. much uh, work these units are doing? As you see here, like, your two Tom Kenches did more damage than your Nidalee. Mm -hmm. So that these two units are actually, like, your carries. This one's just not really doing anything. So you'd rather just put in, like, either more frontline with Mac Maokai or, like, maybe even play Pike. So like here, I would, um, the first thing I would do, or like the first thing you do, you kind of look at your shop, like nothing's, there's nothing really that interesting. And the second thing you should ask yourself, especially when you won the last round, is like if you should level to try and keep what's streaking. So then you need to scout mm -hmm. the other players to find the answer, to see like okay. how strong the other people are, people are. Yeah. But I think here, like, uh, it's not like an instant, uh, instant level with this board, because you don't really have any damage you have just you just have a really good frontline.
I would definitely like consider on like scouting the other players, but it's hard when you're getting coached, obviously, because there's a lot of the discussion and stuff. Yeah, there was a like normally I'd, I'd scout more. There was a lot less like scouting happening. Yeah, so I was more worried about was just like going off my board. See, this guy's like ridiculously weak. Yeah, this guy looked pretty sad. To so see her again, like they're doing uh, doing more damage. Like, but Lissandra's like. Yeah, she definitely did way more than what the Nidalia did, yeah. So, like, here, uh, considering that um, these two do more damage, and she's not, like, doing that much, I pretty much always want to play uh, for a Brawler here with a uh, Bai and Maokai. Yeah. Maybe if she was, um, if she was two star, then. I'd probably just put in like a, either Pike or just the Maokai just to get some more frontline to protect her. But these two are like actually your carries in the, the situation. Okay. So the only thing I would always do here is just to make 10. Make sure you're staying above 10 gold. Okay. So like uh, these sharp traders are pretty much worthless. So you pretty much always sell these to buy buy. You're still staying above 10. And if you win the round, you can uh, pick up the town Kench. And so, like, um, do you understand, like, this, why you want a position like this? Uh, no, that, that's what I was going to ask. Uh, why you, why you, I know you said that the left and right is where people do the most carries. I'm assuming the carry just, um, targets what is closest to them. Yeah. So, like, say okay. if you got, um, like, say if you were playing these two units, like, where would you put them? Like, you'd either put them, like, both here or, like, both here yeah. or, like, one on either side. And so if they're like um, both here, both of them are going to target this Tom Kench. If they're both here, they're both going to target this one since it's the closest. The only time yeah. they would target these is if, if, is if they are in the middle. But if you put your units in the middle, then you're pretty much trolling because assassins are pretty much always going to walk to your unit if they jump after they jump, after they jump. So yeah. Now if say that say this wasn't my board, say this was like whoever I was fighting, um, and they had like the double Kench on the side. Would you play like say I had like the two Nidalee in or I had the Nidalee in the van? Would you play both the sharpshooters on one side or on so separate sides? Cause... Like if you're playing these two units with your board and you were scouting him or you know so like say I like say I'm fighting my board mm -hmm. like with the the two Kenches and I have a Nidalee and a van. Would I would I want the would I want the Nidalee and van to be on one side or I want them to be on opposite sides? Like, are they gonna? Do I want them to attack one Kench each, or would I want them to be yeah, attacking one? Generally, you want the units to. If they're all attacking one Kench, then he's gonna die faster. And these frontliners, like, especially in the early game, they do they actually do, like, a considerable amount of damage. That's why you wanna focus on units. In the late game, okay. like, these, the damage they're gonna do, it's gonna be nothing compared to, like, the four cost carries, like, Ari or Ash or, like, a Kindred, Talon, Jin. Um, so then you don't really care about like focusing, you care more about like keeping your carry like alive. Yeah. It's like, um, I can actually like show you like one thing that's like really important to do. Say if you have like a three unit board, say if you have like uh, like a Garen and then you have two uh, damage units like Vayne and it's just a TF. You pretty much always want to position like, uh, like this because they're pretty much always going to target the same unit. Yeah. Most people are gonna like have their most people like if are gonna either either do frontliners like here or if they're running a single frontliner, they're gonna have it like this. It's so, like say if he's on uh, this side, he's gonna walk over and he's gonna be like the closest target for all these and they're gonna target the same one. So they just wanna focus down because then you just wanna focus down units if you have a if you only have yeah. like three units, because then you generally like have a weaker board. Is there like a world where that Yasuo would not walk to Garen, he'd walk to TF? No. Pretty much, pretty much never. Okay. There's never a world where she would he would uh, go to ban either just because of uh, Pythagoras uh, theorem, because of the yeah. hypotenuse thing. Yeah, yeah. I hear what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> so like, um, the reason why you pretty much always want to have your, like, say, um, if you have uh, 
like two DPS carries, you pretty much always want them on the same side. The only time you want to split them up is if you, there are a lot of assassin players on like uh, either side. Like say if people have like said on this side and like this side, there's like Diana's mm -hmm. on both sides. So then you kind of just have to like, kind of you, you generally like put these in the middle like this. Yeah. And then like once she jumps over here, she kills this. Then she goes to the front line, and then like this one, this unit will be the last one to die. But if you have yeah. them like uh, on on this side like this, then like she'll jump over here, and then depending on like where this player has the front line, so I'll either mm -hmm. walk through Vayne or here. But if they're in the middle like this, they'll pretty much like just always uh, walk up here. Okay. Also, sometimes yeah. like what you can do is you can position like this. If there are a mm -hmm. lot of assassin players on like uh, the, the left side here, he's like he'll, he'll jump over here, and then sometimes like he'll walk up here instead of going here. Like okay. this is pretty effective if you if they're over on this side, then you can you can do this. Because here they're like all the way tucked into the to one side. So like we'll jump over here and then this will be the closest. Okay, that makes sense. So like scouting for in the early game, like the only backline access people have are like assassins. So that's like the major thing you're scouting for. Um when you're trying to position your carries. Okay. And so you'd, that's also like why you would never put these in the middle, because if he if he jumps over here, he's always gonna walk here. If he jumps over here, he's always gonna walk here. Yeah. So like in lower elo elos, like people might put their carries in the middle, but as you climb, pretty much like as you climb tower to like diamond, I've pretty much never seen anyone put their carries in the middle during the early game. Yeah, I think um, I don't. Know, I, I think a lot of people do the like corner thing, uh, like more so in like lower elos because of how uh, like like, this. whenever. Yeah, well, like just making sure they're blocked in. It was because uh, I think whenever because whenever I started playing this set, it was Soju just watching him, and he's like, just put your corner your carry, and I feel like that's what everyone just does now, which I like. It yeah, was obviously is, the right um... play. Yeah, this is fine to like uh, play around assassins. This is also an option you can do. The only bad part about this is say if like uh, Lissandra is here. Yeah. And say like the front line is uh, is here. Sometimes the front line will walk here. These units will walk up like this. And so mm -hmm. like say if uh, Lissandra is like here, she'll like walk over here. And then like her ultimate like will reach Italy. Yeah. And sometimes like they'll even like walk down to here. It's really awkward how the AI works sometimes, but just like say if this was like in like a Maokai, for example, or a Silas, he has like he has like three hex range. So if your units like walk like this, then all these are gonna take damage from the uh, like his ability. But if you have your units up like this, like your Nidalee is gonna be out of range because he can't like walk past these. Same thing okay. with like Maokai. Like if he if he's able to like walk all the way like here, then he's gonna slow your carry with the spell. So that's why like this is kind of like. Uh, they only, you, only, you only do this when like there's so many assassin players that you pretty much have like no way of playing around them. And then like once you level yeah. to four, you put the next one here. Okay. If you're running yeah three frontliners. Yeah. yeah, this game is like quite unusual because usually I don't like I don't three win streak at the beginning. Um. Usually I feel like I lose like two of the two of the three before the first carousel. Yeah, that's like the um, a big like complaint people kind of have about the set is that you like win streaking doesn't really feel rewarding because the oh, five cost the five, the five cost carries aren't really that great. Yeah. So you can't really just uh, it's you, you need a lot of legendaries if you're gonna like stabilize off them. Yeah, my, my thing more of like uh, when I win streak I don't know if this is like the low elo problem just. But when I went streak and I like I come to carousel and it's like this where it's like there's three items. Granted, like sword and bow are fine, um, but like I'll get one where it's like there's just belts left and it's like okay. Yeah. Also, like one thing about carousels that's worth mentioning is uh, uh, just go back to it because um, you have like one you have like one one cost unit and you have like two cost and three cost units. You also like. Um, because here you usually like have 10, 10 gold is what you're gonna have most of the time sometimes you'll even have like uh like zero if you're like pre-leveled or if you got like a bad opener so then mm -hmm. like uh 
like prioritizing these uh, three costs is really important. You pretty much never want to take the one cost unless you like really need the, uh, the yeah. sword in the situation. So like, yeah. or if you're playing like a super item dependent comp, then that's the only time you would take this. Okay. So you, you pretty much always like uh, like valuing the one extra gold you get here is actually like super important during the early game when you're lower money. Like pretty much like the lower you are on money, the more money matters, and like the the more. And when you're like high on money, it doesn't matter that much. That's why oh, like yeah. uh, you pretty much always, you always want to level when you can stay above forty after leveling because you only lose one gold. And one gold doesn't really matter when you're on 40 gold because you, you're you going to get to 50 next turn anyways. But like okay. if you lose one gold when you're at like 10 or 0, it's going to be a lot harder to make uh, to make econ. So like here after we after we level here, like we play pike and say like we, we really want to keep both these units. But say if we, if we didn't make 10 last turn, we'd have to sell one of them. Yeah, okay. And then like... Then you lose one gold, and then like the next one you want to make twenty, you have to sell like another unit that you could keep if you made econ here, and it just kind of snowballs, and you end up losing a lot of money in the long run. Okay. And also this turn, I would always make uh, pretty much always want to make twenty here, especially if you lose. If you lose, you always want to make twenty. Then you would just sell like. Even selling like a white Vi pair here to make 20 is really important if you lose because then you have no streak and you're gonna get zero gold on this turn and the next turn. Yeah. I think I think we do end up selling we I think we sell the the Evelyn, the Vi, and the Omni. I can see uh would have sold these two to get to sixteen, sell this to get to seventeen, and then you sell these two to make twenty. Pretty okay. much sell everything except for Vi in this situation. Okay. Oh, okay, I know we didn't sell fuck. Uh, those kind of things gonna happen when you're getting coached, cause uh, like everything just kind of goes a bit slower. See, I think um, like me, like like if I was on my own here, I wouldn't have bought this Casio. I would have just uh, like I would have just let it go. But like yeah. it was actually really beneficial that we bought her because she actually did stuff and it was it was decent. Yeah, as long as you as long as she gets her ult off, it's gonna be pretty impactful in like most cases. Especially yeah. if you're good at scouting, you can uh, she can ult the backline when she's like frontlined. So then she can mm -hmm. uh, like pretty much like stun these backline units for like a second or two. Mm -hmm. So like uh, also like Kindred is probably like the best three cost unit to run in the early mid game. Yeah. She's like super flexible. Like regardless of like what frontline you have, you can just toss her in and she'll do fine. Especially with like blue buff, she's gonna ult a lot more often and um jinx yeah like i mentioned she really you only really run jinx if you you need her for three fortune or if you have sharp shooters in okay kindred is like just a super clean carry also if you have a weak bard kindred is super good for uh stabilizing your your uh, like uh, maintaining your health because you're gonna take less damage uh every single turn you should like yeah. kill one or two units usually with her uh, ultimate. Okay. So like here, like whenever you're, uh, yeah, like I mentioned on this turn, you would also consider leveling to play Cassio. But the only time you would level to six here is if like you're you haven't played like one of these people here, and they're like pretty damn strong. Um, like sometimes people would like randomly have like a kindred two and stuff. And if you think you can beat them, if you like level and play a Cassiopeia, then you'd want to do that. But then you you have to be really sure that you're going to win. Because if you level to 6, you go down to like 20 gold, and then if you lose, you have like no streak. Then you're going to be really poor uh, throughout the rest of the, the mid game. You're, you have to eco super hard to uh, get back up to 50 so you can get a nice level 7 roll down. Or if you ever want to fast 8. Okay. So like here, you pretty much always want to level because number one you can stay and save up forty, and number two you can put in a good unit. Sometimes like say, so you didn't have anything good to put in here, like even like rolling, like once or twice, to find a decent unit to put in, is like okay, because it helps you maintain your win streak. Like say if you uh, you roll like twice here, mm -hmm. 
uh, you're spending like four gold, but if you maintain your win streak, because you find like a good unit, like maybe you find like a random ash, or even if you find like another kindred, just running two kindreds, and if that like is enough to help you win, then you're gonna get three gold like for every round, and that's gonna be enough. Uh, it's gonna be worth it since you paid like four or six gold by rolling a couple of times. Yeah. But in general, on this turn, I wouldn't roll unless you're um, unless you're like one of these two, unless you're like one of these two people, and you're loose streaking. Okay. Whenever, whenever you say you'd roll, like, if I if I were those people, you mean like just roll once, roll like a lot of gold, or roll, roll until you're you're stable. Because if you're if you have like, once you're getting like to around seventy health or lower, and you're yeah. streaking, then you have a, then that means you have a really weak board, and um, yeah. so like how much you roll will obviously like depend on what you find, but the problem mm -hmm. is if you don't roll, you're gonna be like. 30 or 40 health on this turn and then you pretty much just you have to hit on level seven otherwise you literally just go eighth yeah but if you roll here and you like actually stabilize your your health and you're here with like 60 or 70 like maybe you like mm -hmm. level and you find like a a really good unit and then that stabilizes you then if you miss your level seven roll one you can still like maybe get a sixth or seventh okay So like here, like when the shop's not interesting, the first just instantly just stop scouting. Super important. Okay. <laughs> so it was also kind of hard to see what people were playing because they were playing a lot of random comps from what it looked like. Yeah, I'm super. Like I don't think anyone in here was playing like a Talon or Morgana or anything. There were a lot of sharpshooter players, but I think it's because yeah. you know, it's pretty it's pretty easy to play. Also, like here, uh, you could have also gone like uh, like dusks. It's pretty good. What with gunblade? Yeah, like you have a good like blue buff and bramble vest are like two good items for ribbon. And oh, you get, like okay. a spark or something. The sword can turn into like a gen item, but like okay. dusk is pretty hard to play. So. And it's gonna be like super hard if you're top, you're getting coached while you're doing it. It's gonna get very can get very confusing very quickly. So like here you're pretty much just scouting. Um, you want to check here the three people you played real quick, and then scout the other players. And if you see that there are some people that are like really strong, like like this guy. Like just love if you like say if you leveled and played played play lux and she would like cc these units and that would probably would have been the difference between like winning and losing okay. but yeah this uh jinx kind of destroyed yeah it's tough because like Leveling to put in Lux probably would have made the difference, but I wouldn't really expect this guy to uh, to beat you. Maybe if you like, there's also like one thing you could also could have done is just to swap sides. Because if you're like Kindred was, uh, or not Kindred, but if your Cassia was here and she ulted, it would have stunned these three units. That probably would have been the difference between like winning and losing. Okay. Um, so like, from my like understanding, it's good to, is it it's gonna play opposite sides of people, right? Or no? It depends. Like this guy really wants to play. Like uh, depends on the units you have. When you have Cassio, you want to be on the same side, so you can defend <clears> their backline. Okay. And, like um, Vi likes to um, be in front of like Clemson units, so she can like um, ult multiple people or ult multiple frontliners to shut their armor. But like, okay. um, it doesn't really matter all that much. It depends if you're stronger. Like if you're um. If you were weaker than the other guy, then you want to be opposite side, because like, say if your kindred was like here, and then you have your units out in like a line like this. Once mm -hmm. these units starts to kill like your units on this side, then like his front line, your his front line might like walk down to your carry, and these units might like even start like targeting your carry while your carry is still targeting their front line. So that's why you want to be on the opposite side when you're weaker, but when you're stronger than him, then you usually want to be on the same side. But it depends a little bit on the units they they have. 
because they have some like ab abilities that can change the uh, can change which side you want to be on. Yeah. Especially when you're pretty when you're running Cassie, you pretty much always want to be on the same side as the opponents. Because like the backline stun is super impactful. Like if she would have stunned stun the backline there, your kindred would like still be alive. She would like go target the the Jin, he would like die in one shot, and then these units would still be alive and be able to like heal uh, Jinx before she ults again. Okay. So it's a lot of small stuff like that. It's like super impact impactful because like keeping your wind streak here is like it's pretty damn important. You're kind of just got unlucky that uh, your Kindred jumped here and she gets like her Missy Seed by the Aurelia. If that didn't happen, you probably could have won. And so pretty much like here, you have a couple of different options. You either, uh, you pretty much, you always level to seven here, and then you either fast eight or you want to roll a little bit. And if you're gonna roll, then you want to sell your, uh, want to sell your chosen. Okay. So if I if I if I'm gonna roll at seven at four one, I sell chosen, and if not, I'm if not, going fast. But yeah, if not, you just you, you can keep it. Like, there's no point in selling your chosen if you're to make your board weaker if you're not gonna roll. Yeah. Like the only. So. Time... All right, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna try and talk over you. Um. So then. Then when I go eight, that's when I would do my roll down transition. Yeah, because here you can you have so much health since you win streak that you can uh, can pretty much just go uh, can go fast eighth or fast eight here. Okay. Your items are like pretty. Uh, they're not like screaming one specific comp, but like uh, they're a bit awkward because you can like giant slayer here is gonna be like pretty good, but. Since uh, the, there's no like uh, nobody who's gonna proc on in the lobby, it's not gonna be that great after all. So mm -hmm. you have like Rage Blade, and then that's like the other good Ash item you can make. And then you probably want the, then you still like want QSS. So, and you can't really play Talon either because you don't have a single glove. So yeah. You, so I would probably, uh, I would probably go Dusks from here because you can make Dusks bad. But okay. again, if you haven't played the comp, it's going to be pretty difficult. Yeah. Because there's like so many different carries you, you run, so. Like you see here, like how impactful the, uh, the ult from uh, Kindred was. Even though you lost, you still managed to kill like a bunch of units. Yeah. So you saved like uh, four HP just off uh, getting a good Cassie ult off, and like four HP really matters, as you saw like in the end. I think like one guy had like negative three health, and you had like zero health. So that's like the difference. Like this fight yeah. here is the difference between like going fifth and fourth. And if you position well throughout like the mid game and save like two health on every fight, that's gonna be like ten health at the end of the day. And that's like. Yeah. Get it. And that, that in some situations can be like the difference between like having to roll at eight or being able to go nine. Yeah, I, I definitely don't think about like the, the little stuff like that. Yeah, like TFT is, there's kind of like the, the general stuff. It's kind of like, uh, it's really important. But after mm -hmm. that, it's just a bunch of like little, little things that you need to do in like certain situations to improve. And there's like a, there's so many little things that like they all like matter so much at the end. So like also here, just like making um like I would make rage rage bit on Kindred over Ash when you have Kindred two start because Kindred doesn't always go in uh, the late game comp with Ash. Okay. Now this positioning right here with Kench in this back, you, I should definitely move him right and then put Ash. Oh, I would the just pump. swap these two probably. Yeah. Okay. But it still depends on like assassins. 
Because sometimes you have lobbies with no assassins, but since Talon is pretty meta right now, I would pretty much always assume that you're an assassin player. Yeah. I, I only ever really see Talon in the middle of the board. Um, I don't really see him on the right or left or anything. I don't know if that's just like... Yeah, you want to have Talon on uh, one side here. Okay. You, you, wanna, you always want him to jump on a carry or th a unit that's like super weak that you can just kind of pick off because then he'll jump to the, the carry after. Okay. But yeah, this was a pretty... Uh, if you had QSS, this game would be a million times easier. <laughs> yeah. So like getting cloak here is like pretty big. Because if you get like an Elderwood chosen, you get nine to Elderwood, like I mentioned. And that's pretty much just an insta win. As long as you have like some health to back it up. And like also here, you could definitely consider like rolling. But you have to be like super, super quick with it. It's already that's why it's like super important to already like have your game plan in mind. Like if you're gonna roll here or you're gonna roll after here, because some and like constantly like just being um, just being ready for what like you're gonna do, and, like which units you're gonna play, like what you're gonna sell. Okay. But it, like like I s said as well, like that kind of stuff is a bit harder when you're getting uh, coached. Because usually, like, I would pretty much, like, always sell these Janus, like, once I know that I'm not going to play them, just to clear up my bench space and, like, have a... Just have less stuff going on. Because when, just, even, like, they're, them just being there, like, kind of makes you, like, think about them when you're, um... When you're just looking at your board. Okay. I think, like, here it's fine to, uh... It's fine to also, like, not level here, because our items are very awkward. So we want to wait to see what like what we get um, get here. Also, not picking this up in time was a bit unfortunate, but yeah. What can you do? Yeah. Also, if you're not um, you're still like the standard build when you're going six Elderwood. Uh, is uh wait, what you're seeing the thing? Or, yeah, I like this. It's so pretty much you have these uh pretty much always have these units and then you have like uh like either uh Warwick and uh and set and then you have like say so if you get like Elderwood Chosen you drop him to put in something else. Or you um or you put in like uh, Morgana or Lux for Dazzler. But in this lobby, uh, there wasn't that much uh, ED comps. But like, yeah, Dazzler is super strong against Ash. And like, why? Jin. Why are you frontlining the Warwick? I oh, know. I'm just kind of like showing the uh, units you, you know, so want to look for, but like. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, you can always like. Uh, you either like position, like kind of like this, or you. Uh, or you just like box up like this. Okay. And that's why like uh, when you when you've decided not to roll, like one important thing to to do here is like kind of just scouting to see like um, if you need like um, like if you're gonna run Dasker. And also like another thing you could also do like say if you find like um like sometimes you can also just run like a random cane like if you find like a young two star or like a cane two star it's so, like say if like nobody has like ga on their carry and they're all like positioned like this then you can kind of like see okay canes can do like a lot more work so yeah you're, you're kind of like just uh just being clear like which units are going to do a lot of work in this lobby and which are not going to do as work as much work and like which synergies are going to do do better So pretty much like, uh, I'll just go through like what I would pick up on every roll. Like you're pretty much just buying nothing.
Then I would just buy uh, I would just buy Silas and Lux. Okay. And then nothing here. Buy like pretty much everything except these two. And pick up the this one and this one. Now I assume you pick up you would pick up the divine because of Warwick. Oh wait, I don't even have Warwick yet. Sorry. Or the the Lux, you mean? Or the the Lee Sin? Yeah, the Lee Sin. It's just if you hit Lee Sin two star, you're gonna play him. Okay. And especially when you have like blue buff as well, you can sell Kindred too. If you don't, it's only two autos, and then he kicks people out, out of the map. So yeah, it's really strong. So you like a buy Yon. Like same thing, same thing with like Azir or Yon. If you get like a random Azir, he's or Azir two star. He's pretty much always gonna get played. Okay. Same thing with like Yon. Just pick up a Hecarim. You always want to buy this. And this this here is like like any any chosen that you can fit into your comp is you just want to play especially now when you're like on a when you're when you just lost the, the last two rounds and you people everyone else here is going to be rolling to stabilize so you just need to get as strong as you possibly can yeah so okay so help. say sorry oh no go ahead uh, um okay so say i'm doing my roll down and Say like I I literally get nothing that fits in my comp. What what do you do from there? Mm, you if you find nothing like I mean something you, you generally like will find something, but if you literally just find nothing, then it's just one of those unwinnable games like where you just go away, like they happen. Okay. But like even even like if you find like a random Casio two star and you like don't need Ash, you can still like play her. Like, that's why it's also like picking up legendaries because if you find him like randomly two star like Azir doesn't really like fit into this comp because he has like no synergies same thing with like Yon but like if they're two star they're still gonna do work yeah. it's kind of the same like uh it's the same thing in like the early game like if you have uh like say you have like a Maokai and like a Garen and like a Lissandra you don't you don't have a single synergy but if they're all two star they're gonna do like a ton of work in the early game it's kind of like the same, it's like the same uh, theory, or like the same uh, concept with like these legendaries. And like with the, with the forecast as well to a certain extent, like a random ribbon too is still gonna like do some, do a certain amount of work. There are like, a, there's a little bit of like, a, some of them are more item dependent, like random Ari is just, pretty much never worth it, even if she's two star, cause she's so item yeah. dependent. But like a random ash, like if you're not playing like an ash comp, like a random ash two star is still gonna do work. Gen two also like does work. And like pretty much uh, like any uh, like random Warwick two star, if you're playing like an Ari comp, if you hit like a random Warwick two, then still like just throw them in. Okay. Now this round in particular, I assume I didn't like, I literally put no items on anyone. I assume this is like cost me. Yeah, I think that there's two things. The, the number one thing is that you, when you realize you have like bad, whenever you have bad Ash items, you pretty much always need six Elderwood. Because then you need like to scale from the trait. Okay. So that's like the number one thing. And also like, mis and if you're running six Elderwood, then you just don't, don't need Mystic because you get enough uh, tankiness from this, the trait. Yeah. It's so like the important thing here, I would just pretty much always sell the Casio and the the Yumi before I start ro rolling here, just to clear your bench space. Because you're going to mm -hmm. need a lot of, you're going to find a lot of pairs. And so your mm -hmm. bench is going to get like stacked and cluttered like it did. Okay. And also like at this point, you should just, just place items. And if you're not sure, like who to place um, Bramble on. Yeah. Like just kind of throw it on, uh, just throw it on somebody you're pretty much sure you're going to sell like Cassiopeia or even like Vi is probably going to get sold at some point. Like if you find set, you're probably going to play him over her. Okay. And also like your positioning is a bit, uh, it's a bit awkward, like this Cassiopeia just walked like down here and back up again.
If you had QSS, you'd be, uh, be fine this game, but. And it's like, once we fix our positioning here, then we're stable. Okay. Like in uh, this situation, it could also like, um, like say there were a lot of uh, like AD, AD carries or like other Ash players, then you would take out Kindred to play um, uh, Morgana or Lux or two Dazzler. Because Kindred only gives you like one more Hunter, which uh, still matters when you don't have items on Ash, because it's like a really good damage synergy, especially when you got yeah. like Elderwood uh, Warwick as well. Also, like from here, you could also like consider going nine because you have a lot of gold and you're still gonna get like interest this turn and the next turn, and you're not gonna die this turn. So like, still it's fine to not um, uh, what you call it uh, to also go nine from here. It's pretty much like two plays you either make here. You you either roll for like uh, three star Ash and Kindred, or you go level nine to put in like. Uh, Pretty much anything, like any legendary or like any two star forecast, or just playing like a second Ash two star. Here you could also like consider stopping like right after you hit um, you hit Kindred three and Nuna two because you're on like thirty five gold. The only thing you have is like uh, an Ash pair and like mm -hmm. a single Warwick. So like if you win, you can just sell the Warwick, and if you lose, you have to roll next turn. So then you can just you can you pretty much just maximize the amount of gold you can get before you roll down for Ash three. Just like okay. it higher, higher, have higher odds of hitting her. Okay. Just uh, facing, uh, not finding a single glove, like, it's kind of what screwed you this game the most. Do you have any other uh, questions about any part of this game? Um. No, not really. I think uh, most of it is like, I will say like ha like going through that game, like I, ob even though it was like blatantly obvious, uh, I didn't actually know what like I was playing probably because I was more paying attention to like what you were saying. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like common when you're getting coached too. Like, yeah. Like, you, you, like very few of the games are actually won when you're getting coached just because there's so yeah. much like talking going on. Yeah, I was going to say like, I think my role that like, if I was alone and I knew what I was doing, I think my roll down probably would have been a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, Cause like again, being kind of like unsure, even though like it's literally obvious what I was playing, uh, it was kind of unsure when I started rolling at the beginning, and then like I don't know, as like the roll on went happening, I was like, okay, this is what I need. Yeah. Your items, your item, items were a bit awkward this game, which made everything a bit like more difficult. I mean, yeah. That's that's like a part of like the the skill ex skill expression in TFT is like. Still, like, finding, like, a decent carry to run, like, with items you have. And, like, finding your win condition based on your items. Yeah. And, like, I think... this case was, uh, case was six Elderwood since you didn't have that great Ash items. Yeah. I think, um... I think a problem that it has not knowing what unit is, like, a actual good unit. Um... Like, like I didn't even know Kindred was, like, decent until, like, earlier this week when... I like looked at some wall chests and people were running through Kendrick comps and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of like the best way to figure out like what's best is kind of just to uh, 
kind of just look at like a fight. Like say if you were playing against uh, your board here, and then like you're kind of just expecting like st stuff to happen. Like you kind of you kind of think to yourself, oh, I beat this guy, and then you then you can and then you like check the damage graph to see like if any units kind of like did more or less than you expected, and try to like think about like why that is. That's like a good way to improve. Okay. And so like say for example here, if you're like this uh, this guy and. Then you see like Kinder just did a ton of work right here, and like uh, that can like that can, that can like give you the idea that Kinder is like a better unit than uh, she actually is. Or if she like say did between like what Vi did and like what Tom Kench did, then you can kind of see okay, Kinder kind of just did nothing that round. Like she got out damaged by like a one star tank. She's kind of useless. Then maybe you think and then like kind of the same thing like Callista is kind of this unit that's pretty item dependent. If she's gonna do work like she needs like rage blade and hurricane and she's actually gonna do a lot of work yeah also like if you watch streams of like pro players just kind of seeing like which units they prioritize and which they don't that's also like a decent way of finding out yeah and there's also if you go on this website you can go on like uh you can go on units and you just go on like average placement so you can kind oh. of like see how so like people who have Yonan in, in their team get like a 3.58 average average rank or expected okay. placement. Yeah. So you can kind of see like which are like people who have Tom Kench and they're like in game comp or this is probably due to fortune actually. Like people just yeah. Uh, but like even like a call you can see okay here people maybe like Ninja Sin is not great anymore or like uh. Even if you're like unsure about Jax or, or like here you can see that like uh, like Lux is doing like surprisingly well. Mm -hmm. Maybe like prioritize her more. But there also like with this data, there's also like something just need to keep in mind. Like Lux is probably like super good right now because he's getting paired with like Morgana and Talon because she gets yeah. in the Enlightened comp. Same thing with like oh, same thing with like Irelia. She's mm -hmm. like uh, super high up there. Like pretty much like yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six. All these units are in the enlightened comp. That's why they're like super high up on this list. Yeah, I say, uh, can you like take some of this as like, um, like bait, like the the Jack comp or something? Because like, I mean, a lot of people are probably running it. Obviously, like some aren't hitting, so they're gonna go like eighth or lower. Yeah, it's the same it's thing. Like, like if you look at uh, here. See the duelist comp, like people who hit like Yasuo three star Fiora three star and Jax three star are expected to get this placement. Okay. But the people who like don't hit this are not expected to get this. And it's kind of like the same thing here. Like this is like the average placement of this comp if you get an adept chosen. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you found this helpful please comment and let me know, and I might post more coaching sessions in the future with the permission of my clients. And if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord. We got over 1,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care and see you in the next video.